Hi, everybody. Can you everybody hear me? Okay. I'll raise this a little up. Uh, yes, my punk book is for sale. Uh, it's an oral history of the punk scene in the Bay Area. If your children have told you that you are a capitalist tool, this book might help explain why. Uh, my story is about brotherly love. Last spring, my brother, who's eight years older than me, called me and told me he had terminal cancer of the blood and bone marrow. And as soon as I heard that, I thought, like anybody does, if you hear someone who gives you that news, it's very sad and depressing. And then a small part of me thought, good. It's okay, shake it out. <laughs> the reason I say that is throughout my entire life, my, uh, my brother has waged a small and consistent campaign of cruelty. Ever since I was a little kid, I'd be running around the house with a toy and he would just stick his foot out. Nothing more hilarious. Um, uh, he would turn to me at the dinner table when I was uh, very young and say, you don't count. In the middle of me uh, telling a, a very fascinating child anecdote. Um, we, uh, we grew up on a cattle ranch in Montana and one day as I was holding down a calf getting branded, I hear my name being yelled and then my face gets hit with a freshly severed calf testicle. And I look up and my brother and his friends are laughing. So we have a, a very unique relationship. <laughs> um, uh, my favorite actually is the, I guess you'd call it the, the endless quiz. He, will, he still does this to this day. He will tell you something and then he'll stop and say, guess what happened next? <laughs> and you go, I, you know, I don't care, just tell me. No, 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 guess. Like, I don't want to guess. He goes, come on, come on, just guess. Okay, is it, and he'll go, no. <laughs> what a fucking asshole thing to do, constantly. Why on earth would you, it's, so uh, anyway, uh, that, that is our, um, our relationship. We live very different lives. He ended up being a B-52 pilot, and I do what I do. Uh, <laughs> Slightly different lives, and um, we don't talk to each other that much. But we, whenever we uh, we do, we realize there's only a couple of things we really have in common, and one of them is that sooner or later, both of us will end up looking and acting like our dad, and that is terrifying. <laughs> Every single bad habit is manifesting in the DNA in both of us, and. Uh, Another thing uh, we, uh, we bond on is that neither of us were really equipped mentally or physically to inherit our family's cattle ranch. And we got the hell out as quickly as we could. And uh, so we do have a laugh about that because we were we'd loser cowboys. We would, it would just fail. All the animals would die and we'd, we'd, uh, we'd have to like move away. Um, so... So uh, my, during the course of this conversation about cancer, my brother tells me that he will be in the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota for a month, and he's doing this radical stem cell therapy. His insurance is covering all of it, and he needs me to be there for one week to babysit whatever. I don't even know, you know what he'll be doing there. Um, so he has a, a room, a Marriott uh, extended care hotel room, and there's two bedrooms. And he said, it'll be great. It'll be no problem. And I'm thinking, I'm just, I don't even have a say in this. I'm just automatically, I'm supposed to do this, which is fine, except I did have a, a vacation uh, planned to South America with my girlfriend. So fuck that. I guess that's off the table. Uh, when I mentioned that to him several times. Um, so uh, this, as it turns out, it's around the holidays. So Two days after Christmas, I fly to Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm going to be there for eight days. And I don't know anything about Rochester or the Mayo Clinic or cancer or anything. So we, uh, we 
he explains to me what has to happen. He has to be he has to walk with me every morning down to the doctors in the stem cell laboratory, whatever it is, and get his blood taken. And then it's just a series of pills the rest of the day, which I'm supposed to write down. Uh, so. So we go and you know do the do the get the blood in the morning, and I'm walking around. And if you've ever been to the Mayo Clinic, and some of you may, because we all go from cancer, right? So if you have good insurance, you might actually be there at some point. So this is sort of what it's like. It's a labyrinth of tunnels underneath the streets and the buildings that connect each other, and there are no signs. <laughs> and the maps don't mean shit. They're just com completely confusing. Um, and above ground, it's below zero, so there are sort of gerbil habit trails that connect buildings to other buildings, and everything is about cancer. It's cancer town. It's like a sicky town Disneyland. I mean, everything, everybody moves in slow motion. There's a lot of wheelchairs, a lot of oxygen masks. Everyone has a mask on their face. Uh, everywhere you go, people are moving really slow. Every doorway is like this wide, and the automatic door takes forever to shut. The traffic lights, I swear to God, it says walk for like three minutes. Every single traffic light. So that's Rochester, Minnesota. So every day we would walk through this tunnel, and the tunnels are so long because they connect buildings and there's nothing on the walls. It's like a gulag. It's insane. You'd think, just cheer people up, man. Have a painting or something, a photo. Here's a photo of a flower, you know? Nothing. It's just gray. Go to your doctor and don't think about anything else. So, so we do. And, of course, uh, all the nurses that uh, come and do all the things, they're all from Minnesota. And they're all, oh, sure, you betcha. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I had to plug in the car last night. Yeah, pretty cold. And I'm trying not to laugh because that's my accent. That accent goes from Minnesota through the Dakotas into Montana. And I'm, you, if you've ever seen the movie Fargo, it's not exaggerating. That's exactly how they talk. So... Yeah, the nurses and the, oh, sure, you know, everything's fine. And uh, so we, uh, we, we do the blood thing, and then I have to write down all the pills he takes, you know, 20 pills, like, you know, in various configurations. And, you know, I, I don't know anything about this, but so I, I, I well, I don't want to kill him. Uh, you know, I better, I better keep track of this stuff. And then, uh, you know, we figured out one pill within two seconds will make him just blow chunks all over the bathroom. So that's happened a few times, and then we realized, um, you know, oh, it might be this pill. And the pill was anti-nausea. Thank you very much, <laughs> pharmaceutical companies of America. Um, so, uh, you know, part of what I had to do there, uh, he kept saying, you know, uh, I'm going to start losing my hair in about three days, and I want you to shave my head. And I'm like, I don't fucking want to shave your head. I'm going to be wiping your ass next. I didn't come here for that. Why don't you get a nurse to shave your head? Fuck, it takes two, you could do it yourself. I'm not gonna shave your head. Jesus Christ. You know, I, I, nobody told me that when I signed on, that you'd have to shave your brother's head. So, <laughs> I say, no, I'm not going to. And then we kill a week in sicky town America, you know? And I have to go out, because his food in his like, refrigerator is like fro a whole frozen chicken. You know, just nasty frozen foods. I'm like, I can't fucking eat that. So I go wander around restaurants in Sicky Town, which is, it's Minnesota. So it's like meat, potatoes, meat, potatoes, meat, potatoes. There's a vegetable. You want salt and pepper? What for? You know, it's like bulk. It has no flavor. And then, um, so I bring it back each day. I did note that one of the restaurants had uh, a sign in the window that said maximum 50 chicken wings per customer. So, <laughs> so we do that, and I, and I do get fascinated. There's one guy staying in our hotel in the Marriott Extended Care who is from Saudi Arabia, and he's really tall and giant, and he wears a, like a full-length uh, kind of a gown thing and sandals, and he just stands by the elevator for a long time doing nothing with this pompous, I own this building kind of stance. He's just like... <laughs> and... 
I'm fascinated. Well, who is this guy? You know, what is is he a king? Is he part of the Saud family? And then I realized he's staying at the Marriott. He's probably not high up on the list. There's a plenty of other hotels there. But he, uh, he, he, he is my object of fascination because there's nothing else really to think about uh, except the pills and the blood. And finally, uh, you know, we, we start to wind down, and I only have a couple of days left. <laughs> Thank God. But my brother and I do end up talking uh, more than we, I think I've ever talked. I've never been with him for eight days since I was a little kid. So, And plus, he's too tired and sick to run anywhere, so we have to kind of stay in the room, and he has to listen to me. He is ordering uh, uh, guns on his iPad, and we do argue a lot about guns. And he's ordering AR-15s, and he's telling me, I just got another uh, 30-round clip from Canada. It's going to be here Tuesday. And I'm like, oh. He, I think part of it he does just to bug me. So anyway, he's ordering his guns, and we start to you know wind down the visit, and then uh, it comes to the point where he needs his head shaved and uh at this point i don't know i think maybe it's the whole atmosphere of rochester minnesota the sicky town mayo clinic it's kind of beating me down it's exhausting being there if you're not sick i can't imagine what it's like when you are because it's really tiring just walking around and seeing everyone so sick all, all over all over the place so uh so i say you know what the fuck we grab the razor and we go into the bathtub and stand in the bathtub, and he takes his shirt off, and I shave his entire head with a little electric razor. I keep thinking, maybe I should have put a peace sign in the back where he can't see. The little liberal arts commie pinko brother, one last mark, but he would probably see it. Somebody would tell him, some nurse would go, oh, you got a peace sign on the back of your head there. That's nice, real, real good. So I don't, I shave the whole thing. We take pictures, and, um, and then I, uh, I fly back to uh, San Francisco, and he goes back to South Dakota where he lives. And, um, you know, I talked to him about a week later. Apparently, he's, the numbers are up. Always the numbers in cancer. It's a world of numbers. The numbers are up. They're looking good. And uh, I guess he's going to be around for a while. So maybe if he hangs in there, he can shave my head. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.